Hi, this is Dr. Brothers. I'm going to go through real quick and show you how to download Cordis Prime. So you want to start off by just going to Google and searching for Intel Model Sim Download. When that comes up, you're going to see the website intel.com with Cordis Prime Model Sim. When you go into there, that will bring you over to this tab. And you're going to have to log in. You're going to have to create an account and log into Intel in order to download this. The account's free to use. Change the addition to the Lite edition. We're looking at the Cordis Prime Lite edition. Uh, make sure you select the appropriate operating system. Cordis works, um, it's native to Linux, but it works very, very well in Windows. It's been ported over to Windows for several years. Works really well. Once you're there, you can scroll down and see the individual files. We want to grab Model Sim Intel FPGA Edition. Includes Starter Edition. If you want, you can include um, all of Cordis Prime. Model Sim is a simulator. Cordis is a development and compilation environment that will actually output an FPGA image. And so both these are free software to use and there's limits on the size. So you can go ahead and get these and it'll work up to a certain size. Once you download this file, you can install it. And when you get here, we're going to just include the um, starter edition. License is not required. If you go to the FPGA edition, license is required. So we're gonna go with the starter edition. I accept. Next, uh, install it to the C drive, and then it's going to go through the installation process. Once this is installed, I'll start another video and show you how to actually use Cordis. Okay, we're back. We have installed Model Sim, so we're going to go ahead and start it now. Model Sim, it opens up like this. While that's opening, let me jump over and show you one other thing. So here is lab one. I downloaded the assignment. Once I download it, I copied the files over to my um, Z drive. So it, Model Sim likes it if you work uh, with short extensions. Um, so I have it at ZRTL. And inside that, I have all of these files that were on the website. And then I've added this folder. And I have, let me delete this. Sorry. Then I added this file. There's two files in here, init.do, compile.do. We're going to talk about those in just a second. So when this opens up, this is what Model Sim looks like. And it, I like to use the um, terminal at the bottom. So if you say ls, it's going to show us where we currently are at, or the files that are in here. So it's uh, Linux-style commands. So I'm going to do a cd to the z drive, because I want to move over to z, z colon. That brings us here, and now I can do an ls, and I'll see the documents, profile, and rtl, cd, rtl. So now I am in this folder. Um, we can get there also using the Windows prompts. If we go to change directory under the file, and when you go in here, you can see where I'm at right now, ZRTL. I actually do want to be inside this model sim folder. So I'm going to go ahead one more level deep, select that folder. Now, when we come down here, we can say an ls, and we can see that we have multiple files in here, the compile.do, the init.do. Um, let me actually jump up one level, show you the all the .v files that we have. We can go here and we can edit one of these files if we want. So it'll bring up the editor, the built-in editor here. Um, this editor is okay, but it's in a little tiny window. I don't really like it, so I usually don't use their editor. So we're going to go back into the model sim folder. So what I like to do is use Notepad++ and we are going to go to 
the compile and the init.do, and we're going to open those up with Notepad++. And I'm going to bring up the file view on the other side so we can see all the RTL files that we have. Now, this is a pretty simple one. The init, all it does is creates a library called work. That's it. That's all it does. Compile.do, um, vlog, report progress, 300 work, work. This is telling the library that we're working in. So the library name, work, and this dash work, work, those need to be the same name. I always just leave it at work. I never, never change that. And then I have a list of all the files right here that we're going to be working with. Control, decode, execute, fetch, uh, memory, MIPS, MIPS testbed. You can look over here and you can see that those same files are here. I'm not going to use this make file. And if we look at the make file, we can see that basically they're doing the same thing. They're going to do a uh, simulation. And then the MIPS testbed is going to be composed of these files, the same ones that we were just talking about it, and then they're going to run the simulation and then clean up after the simulation is done. So that's all the make file is doing. We're going to use the do files in model sim. So if you're having trouble with tools on the Lab 1 web page, you can use model sim, go this route. So let's jump back over to model sim. And we're going to double check that we're in the correct directory by just doing an ls. And now we're going to do init. Dot do. The do command tells model sim to do something. So we're going to do init.do. Run this script file. And you can see it ran and it created this folder right here at the top. Work and work is empty. And it's in the path ZRTL model sim work. If you go into the file explorer, we can see that work is right here. And if we go in there, it has an uh, info file. That's it. Now, we want to do do compile.do. Hit that, and it's going to run through and compile each of those Verilog files. And you want to look through this results. You want to look through and make sure that there are no errors. And so error zero, warning zero on all of them. So that's good. Everything's good there. Now. What we want to do is run the simulation. So if we go up here, we can open up work, and we can see now that we have all of our files in work. If you make a change to a file, you can either rerun compile, or you can right-click on it and say recompile, because it's already in here. So you can use the keyboard, or you can actually use right-clicks. I'm going to right-click now, and I'm going to say simulate, on the test bed, and we can see what it called. If we look, it changed the view, but let me pull this up and show you what it actually typed. vsim work dot mips underscore test bed. You can type that command on the command line, hit enter, it'll do the same thing as the button click. So now, when we run this, there's nothing in the waveform view. So if you look at the Lab 1 website, one of the things it's talking about doing is how to do simulations. And when you're doing this, you need to look and see what things are running when you do it. So let me see where actually it showed it real well in the lab zero. So maybe I'll open that one up real quick. Yeah, let me open that up real quick just to show you what we want it to look like. So if we go into the general, gentle introduction, and you go down here, you're going to see that he runs a simulation. And this is the waveform that is obtained when you run the simulation. So that's what we want to emulate with model sim. And so we're going to pick a couple of values. Um, we can see that there are these, um, this hierarchy now in this tree. And if we look at these, we can go inside and step down deeper and deeper into the hierarchy. And you can see what every one of these is made up of. And so you can look through this. And this is a one-to-one -one relation to the Verilog code. 
But let's just look at the MIPS, the processor level. So we're going to grab this, and we're going to go down here, and we're going to grab everything in this view. We're going to say right-click, and we're going to add wave. Add it to the waveform viewer. And that starts this. Now, before we move on, I want to save this so that we have this for reference. I'm going to go File, um, Save, and it's going to put it model sim wave dot do. Okay, that sounds good. I'm going to save that wave do. If we run back over to the file views, we can see if we go into model sim now, there's a wave dot do and there's a v sim. We want to edit this one with Notepad++. And this is human readable. So what it did, my mouse, it added these waves. So these are the waves that were added to the waveform viewer. So nothing magic is happening here. This is very straightforward. Now, we can just type run space dash A, and that's run all. And it's going to run through and just do that until it gets to the finish. Now we want to go back to the waveform view and see what it did. And here's what it did. And we can go in and we can use the zoom full hourglass. And now, just like we were looking at in the lab zero, you can see how it has the waveform view. We now have the waveform view. Um, in model sim. You can right click on these and format them. So our instruction, we usually want to look at that in a hexadecimal. Let's change that to a hex. Let's zoom in a little bit and now we can see these hex values that are going by. Here's the PC. We can even look at the PC if we want to in decimal. So we can see which instruction we're at. And if we look at the PC we can see that it's 4, 8, 12, because we're doing byte addressing. Um, so you can go through and select how you want to view these things. We can also do these if there's something that you want to see and it doesn't make real sense to view it as a number. You can go and look at this as an analog value. And if we go like this, we can see that this PC is going to count all the way up and drop down and count up and drop down. And so this is running through the program a couple of times. And we can see that this re uh, behavior is reflected here, the first two values. This um, variable, this is ALUOP 0010 and 01, 001001. So it's a repetitive behavior. The program is being ran multiple times. But we want to look at this as a literal. And that's it. You can now go through and analyze your RTL in this manner. If you want to go even further than that, you can go into your Verilog files, into the test bed, and you can add print statements to the test bed. You can add um, so this is doing dump fares and things like this. Um, these will be displayed down in the bottom. And so it, dump fare is for the other simulator. And so model sim doesn't like it. And so you can see that it doesn't know what to do with it. But you can do a dollar sign print. There are some other things that you can do. And it will print out at the bottom of this that's equivalent. But you can change the testbed file and get things to print out here. You can also even, if you want to, do file reads, file writes inside the testbed file, and it will show up in the output. All right. I hope this helps. Good luck.